everyone, welcome to our cookie decorating class. My name is Denise. And I'm Elizabeth. And we're gonna decorate some watermelon themed cookies with you today. So before we get started, I'd love for you to grab just a few things. First, wash your hands, cause you're gonna be handling your cookies. And then get something to cover up your table, maybe a piece of parchment paper like we have. You can use a cookie tray, a tablecloth, a wax paper, something like that. And then you'll also need to grab a pair of scissors, some napkins or paper towels for your sticky hands, and some toothpicks. So press pause if you need to before you go gather those items. And then when we come back, we are going to dig right into our kit. So let's unbox our kit and take out all of the fun materials. I know the icing looks so exciting, but I'd love for you to just set it aside for right now. Don't cut the bags quite yet. We're going to show you how to do that. And there are sprinkles that we'll be using later. Of course, the cookies. And there are some extra piping bags for um, maybe the fine details later. And then this, this piece right here is what we'd love for you to take out first. We're going to practice following some lines and getting control of the icing in the piping bags by using this practice sheet. So we're gonna set this in front of us and we're gonna choose a color and we're gonna show you how to trim the bags. So keep in mind, it's easier if you trim just a little bit to start than trimming off too much. Uh, so just start with just a little snip. We're shooting to trim off enough to be able to cover the lines. All right, and so we're both right-handed. Mm -hmm. So our right hand, our dominant hand, is gonna go at the top of the bag and that's where the pressure will go. And then our other hand just helps steady the bag and um, helps to follow along. So let's try by squeezing at the top. And you're gonna to wanna to start at the lines at the very top of your page. And notice we're not touching our icing to the surface, not touching the paper. We're hovering over just a little bit. And you're gonna to wanna to put more pressure at the beginning and at the end of your lines, or else your icing will kind of just drag and not be a definite line. When you stop, when you want to stop the line, you'll notice that we touch down really quick and pull up. It's almost like a dot. It looks like a polka dot in a, in a way. And if you're noticing that the line is having some breaks in it, you might need to cut your bag a little bit more. It's always nice to use a practice sheet to start cookie decorating sessions because it's like a warm up for your hands. So following along these lines, you'll notice that the tip of your bag is moving ahead just a little bit and the icing will just follow right along. And you can go at your own pace as fast as you need to or as slow as you need to. We both love cookie decorating because it's just so fun and I feel like it's a little bit therapeutic. You can get lost in this activity. So we don't want you to feel any worry or feel anything but joy and just relax while you're doing this. You're gonna have a really sweet outcome in the end. So we want you to have lots of fun. And then the circles are always the trickiest for me. So if you just kind of focus on where your bag is going next and make sure that the, the tip of your bag isn't touching, you'll have a little bit better of an outcome. Yeah, circles are really tricky. Don't worry, we didn't put any circle shaped cookies in your kit today. We put some ovals in, but those aren't quite as tricky as a circle.
I hope you're feeling like you, this is going a little bit smoother. The farther you get down the page, I hope that you're feeling more comfortable using the piping bags. Maybe your hands feel more comfortable and have a better placement on the, the icing. And as you're finishing, if you want to practice some more, you can draw some other shapes on the page if you need to. Or yeah. if you're ready to move on, we can just move this paper aside. Yeah, we'll just put that up out of the way so you don't get your sleeve in it or bump it. You don't want to get all sticky. Okay, so let's cut open our cookies. See if you can tell what they all are. There are six different shapes. And depending on how you hold the cookies, they might look unrecognizable. Yeah, sometimes we make our shapes into things that they aren't even really supposed to be. Right. Right. So you probably can tell from this shape it's a watermelon slice. We're going to set that one right in front of us. This is what the watermelon will look like. So cute. And then we'll do another watermelon slice. Which kind of looks like a smile. <laughs> and then how about we do this one after that. This one we're going to do some drawing on. Make a little ant at the picnic. And then... How about the whole watermelon? The whole watermelon. Oh, I love that rind. It's so cute. That's a lot of fun to make. A little popsicle. A watermelon popsicle. And last but not least. And this one looks so cute oh, with all the so sprinkles. Oh, it's so cute. I want to eat a watermelon cupcake. It's so yummy. Yeah, that would be good. And we have all those little sprinkles in the sprinkle cup for you. We're not going to use those in the first step that we're doing. Um, let me tell you about the steps. So we break cookie decorating into three separate steps. The first step we're going to do is outlining them. We're just going to plan ahead for all of the fun. And then the second step is flooding. And then the third step is detailing. That's where we put all the cute little touches on. We'll draw the ant. We'll um, put the little hearts and things like that. So before we start outlining, we need to have our bags all ready to go. So for whatever you did on that first bag, try and trim your bag so that it's the thickness that would cover those lines. So trim it just a little bit. And Remember? if you weren't happy with how your practice went, you have a chance to change that on the other bags now. Good point. These colors are just so summery. I know, I think this watermelon color is my new favorite color. It is so cute. All right, I think we're ready to go. We've got all our supplies ready. All right, so for the watermelon slice, remember at the bottom of the watermelon, there's a rind. And at the top of the watermelon is the fruity part. So what I'm going to recommend we do is let's start with the juicy watermelon part. Move up a little bit. Imagine there's that green rind right here. And we're just going to start a little ways up. And I'm trying to go parallel to the cookie at the bottom. And I'm going to create the juicy watermelon portion. I'm having my icing go as close to the edge of the cookie as I can without going over. So this is where a toothpick can really come in handy. If you have placed your icing somewhere that you're not super happy about and you wanna fix it, at this stage it is so easy to take your toothpick and just swipe off your icing and start again. So this is all I'd like for you to do with this first shape is just create the watermelon section and create the rind section. And we're gonna do the same with yeah. the next one because the next piece is just a larger slice of watermelon. So on this half circle, semi-circle here, we're going to leave a space for the rind again. And if you're not satisfied with how you made your line anywhere, 
Just swipe it right off with your toothpick and try again. I did my pink area and now I'm going to make the rind. You can use either shade of green. I chose the darker shade because I'm going to add the lighter shade in the next step so that I can create some marbling and give it that swirly watermelon rind look. All right, so we've got those two mm -hmm. ready. Now this next plaque shape, we call this a plaque. We're using this cookie as a canvas so we can do some artwork if we want, if you would like to draw an ant like we did. So the way I like to do this cookie is I like to start in the middle at the top and then just follow the outline. And you'll notice you're gonna start to see a little bit of a repetitive rhythm here. Each side is the same, so your hand is going to start picking up this memory. There we go. That's our trickiest shaped outline, so good job, guys. Yeah, great job. We call that one in the cookie shop here, we refer to this shape as the fancy rectangle. <laughs> That's got its, a little spice to it. <laughs> that's its fancy name. <laughs> All right, and then the cookies without any icing on, you're gonna wanna move a little closer, so carefully, just so you don't have to reach over your ones you just work so hard on. Yeah, it's so hard to work farther from your body. So when you're working um, closer to you, I feel like our hand strength and fine motor skills are a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So always work on the cookies closest to you. All right, should we do the whole watermelon next? Yeah, let's do that one. Okay, so on this one here, we're just doing the whole shape with the green outline. Our watermelon popsicle. This one is similar to the first two shapes that we did, so we're gonna leave a spot for the rind, but start with the pink again. And should we leave this area for the popsicle stick? Are we gonna pretend the plain cookie's the stick? Yes. And then go up a little bit. Because it's the same color. I like that. And then you can either leave your stick blank how we did, or you can add icing there too if you love so much icing on your True. cookies. You could do that white, you can do that any color really. All right, so the cupcake. This shape is going to become a cupcake. So let's imagine the wrapper on the cupcake is the rind. So, and then the top will be the pink watermelon part. So I like to start with the top of a cupcake because that's where I can see the, the shape come to life a little bit. So I like to follow along the top of the cupcake first and I start to just be mindful of all the swoop, imagining all that delicious icing on a cupcake. And then at the bottom of the icing, try and use your imagination to picture where the the rest of that frosting on the cupcake will fall. That is so smart. And then we can turn the cupcake wrapper into the watermelon rind effect. So much watermelon action going on. <laughs> All right, so you guys just completed the first step. You nice just job. outlined all your cookies. Way to go. All right, so let's just move our cookies around and get them back in the first row again. Those three that we outlined first, I'm gonna bring back closer to me. We're handling them so carefully. 
Now comes the fun part. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all fun, but this is like the relaxing <laughs> yeah. part, I feel like. I love this part. I love to flood cookies. I feel like you can just let all your worries go. So we're going to fill in these sections now with that icing. And because we've made some outlines here, it's going to just stay in between the um, outlines. We may want to trim our bags a little bit as we work, especially if you trim them just really small. I always like to try to see if I can flood with this, this snip first and then trim as needed. So I'm going to first show you how to flood the rind because this is a nice small section. I am just putting on a lot of icing. I'm just squeezing as I go. And it's very important to squeeze at the top of your bag, not in the middle of it. We don't want it to burst open at the top and be like a volcano. So we're trying to get on enough icing to cover it. And then using a toothpick, you can just push up the icing to the pink outline at the top. And I kind of use the toothpick to swirl the icing a little bit in like little circles to spread it to the edges. Yes. And then my rind doesn't have room for the marbling on this one. Okay. If you have a thicker rind, like I made a little bit of a thicker rind, you can do some lines in it with this other shade of green. And I'm gonna show you how if you add a wet icing to another wet icing, you can swirl them together and just give it this marbled effect. See how it just kind of looks like the rind where there's multicolors? I love how that looks. That's fun. It's and so if it starts too. to droop over a little bit, like I noticed I put on a little bit down here and it's starting to fall off, I'm going to just leave it alone because when it crusts over a little bit, it's actually a little bit easier to just scrape off and clean up those edges. So don't worry. The reason that could happen on your cookies is if you put on just a little too much icing. But you know what, don't complain. Too much icing means it's just even more delicious. <laughs> All right, so for the pink part, I know I might need to trim my bag a little bit more on this one. We're gonna trim yeah, the gonna teeniest trim bit mine. more, not too much, just a little trim more. And then we'll do that same technique at the top where we cover up our cookie with icing. I'm swirling a little bit as I go to help blend the areas. You make sure your, your icing is covering the full cookie so it will lay smoothly at the end too. Right. It's always helpful to peek around the cookie all over to make sure there's no little parts peeking through. And then when we get this pink all spread out, we're going to use our black icing right away to add some seeds. So for the seeds, we're just going to add, it's going to look like polka dots at first. So you're going to add some little dots all around your watermelon, however many you'd like. And then you're going to take a toothpick and you're going to start at this one side and go to the other side and drag it through just to make the shape of the seed. You can make them in any direction. It's like a teardrop a little bit mm -hmm. and a toothpick really helps. It just takes a little tug, not much effort at all with the black, just a little bit of momentum. My dad always said not to eat the seeds in a watermelon mm -hmm. because it'll grow a watermelon in my stomach. I love that. <laughs> I love it. And then as you get familiar with this technique, you'll be able to add seeds into some of the other cookies too. Yeah, we're going to be adding a lot of watermelon seeds, unless you want to make seedless watermelon. I guess you don't have to do yeah. the black seeds. Oh, that was fun. Okay, same thing with the next one, friends. Let's do, you can do either section first. You don't have to do the rind first. You can do whichever section you'd like. 
but we're going to do the same techniques. You can add the second shade of green and do that marbled effect. And as you're adding the dark green, if you're planning on making it marbled, don't add too much green icing because the other icing might push, push this over the edge of the cookie when you add it. Good tip. And sometimes instead of a toothpick, I'll use the tip of my bag to drag it to the edge too. Yeah, the tip of the bag really can be a convenient tool as well. Food cookies are so fun to make. They are. And you can't really mess up the marbling either. No, you can't. It all turns out so cool in the mm -hmm. end. And then for this cookie, we originally had made the seeds just line the edge of it. So it's kind of like it's a watermelon smile. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put dots all along the edge of mine. I like how that looks. And then the same thing with the toothpick, just drag it towards the center. Oh, I'm loving them. All right, so for the fancy rectangle, we are covering this one up with just all white, unless you have a different plan. You're welcome to do anything you'd like with your cookies. Part of the fun with cookie decorating is just feeling creative. So if you have an idea, I want you to have complete freedom to just run with it. You don't have to fill it in the same color as you outlined it. You really can do anything you'd like. Now, if you're not interested in putting um, an ant on your cookie, this would also be a great cookie to do some sprinkles on if you'd like. Just have fun, but if you'd like to decorate the cookies like the picture that we shared and like our examples here, we're gonna show you how to do that. Sometimes we like to put sprinkles on the top of these cookies and then write a word underneath. I love how that looks. I might do that for mine. That would be fun. I'm just going to turn mine horizontally and then put a couple sprinkles at the top. I love that sprinkle mix. That's so, so pretty. All right, so we're done with these cookies in this front row. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna shuffle them around to be sure that we're working on the cookies closest to us. Be really careful with the so ones we careful. just flooded. It's best to just push it up. And these need a lot of time to dry before we add any other details. All right, so let's start flooding the watermelon, the whole watermelon, and we will get our other shade of green handy too because this one, we can really see that, that um, rind pattern on here. 
the swirliness. So we're covering up this whole cookie in green. I feel like it's always such a surprise when you're picking out a watermelon at the store. Is there a way to know? Get. I don't know. I've heard different things. Sometimes my brothers would like listen to the inside. <gasps> I've heard like if you knock on a watermelon, yeah. but I don't know what we're listening for. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just start knocking on it and wait <laughs> to know. Yeah, like I feel like the watermelon will be like, pick me. My hands, <laughs> my hands got really messy, so I'm sorry. I'm very green right now. <laughs> I'm gonna wash it in a second. So when you do your watermelon, do you make a few different lines, Elizabeth? Yeah, what I did before was I actually cut the green a little bit thicker in case you want those Ooh, lines bigger. That's a great idea. I'm going to take your advice because I love how your sample set turned out. And then I just kind of went around like that in one big motion. And then I dragged it one way and then the other for each one. I love how doing such a simple thing can make it look so unique. Mm -hmm. Looking good. I wish we could peek and see you guys and see what your work, what you're doing. More watermelon rind. I feel like we could just keep this color in our hand. We could. There's a lot of green going on. I think my popsicle is a little bit too thin of an area. I'm not going to add the other shade on this one. Mine's a little too thin too. So on this popsicle, you really could use sprinkles on this one or you can draw watermelon seeds. So if you have enjoyed adding the watermelon seeds, then maybe add some watermelon seeds to the top. Or maybe you are just so anxious to use some sprinkles. I think I'm gonna add some sprinkles to the top of this one. That will look cute on the popsicle. And also, if you can think of it, try and reserve one of the watermelon sprinkles like one of those whole, whole watermelon slices, try and reserve one for the ant cookie that we're going to be doing a little bit later. So I know in my sprinkle package, I wanna save one of my watermelon slices for later because I want to put them on this one. And then with the other sprinkles, I'm just gonna add it to my wet icing here. You can put sprinkles on as much or as little as you'd like. I like these little big. I know, I love this mix circles. so much. I need one more little. I couldn't pick, so I did. Sprinkles and seeds. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's probably a great idea. I bet that looks neat in the background. Oh, Elizabeth, I love that. I've seen some cookie decorators decorate cookies and add their sprinkles with a, um, tweezers. Really? Like just to particularly place them. You could get as particular as you like or as general. They all taste the same in the end. So just have fun, whatever suits you. Alrighty. That was a good time. Oh, I love how your popsicle turned out. Oh, That's so thanks. cute. I like it. All right, so for the next one, the cupcake, one thing I'm gonna recommend is, I know I'm gonna use sprinkles again, 
I normally like to do that portion of the cookie first, then it won't stick to the other area. So because this cupcake wrapper is such a big space, I don't want my sprinkles to stick to wet icing there. So I am going to do the top part of the cupcake first so I can sprinkle away. sprinkles. I don't want this part like to be a party over. On a it is. It's so cute. And then for the wrapper, when we start doing that, it's going to be the same exact thing as the watermelon shape that we did the big oval if you want it to look like that or you can just make it solid green and at the end do some light green lines over the top oh yeah all right time to flood the lower area now So when you're doing this part, I think it would look fun to have grooves like this, just like a cupcake wrapper would look. Or you could put them on and then swirl them with your toothpick. I think for fun, I'm gonna leave mine just like this. And maybe Elizabeth, yeah, perfect. The swirly rind. So many ways to roll with that. All right, so you guys just finished the flooding stage. Ideally, it's best if we can let these set for about five to 10 minutes before we add any of the details, like the ant and some of the little extra special touches. So why don't you walk away, press pause for about five to 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and add some special details. All right, so we gave our cookies some time to dry and notice they've gone from like shiny to a little bit of a matte finish. So that means that they're ready to hold some of our details on top. So cookies that need details, a lot of these almost are done. Yeah, which you don't wanna add anything else to some of them, that's perfectly fine. I know for some of the watermelon ones, we just added like one line in between. Yeah, it gives it a little bit of dimension. Let's talk about rebagging some of our yeah. icing because some of them, I know I've trimmed a little bit too large now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna show you how you can take your icing from the first round and use the new bags to rebag it and start fresh with a smaller opening. So just open it up. And then I recommend you don't do it directly over your cookies, just so there aren't any accidents. It's a great idea to trim the bag even way bigger off to the side so that it comes out easy. And it's like a fresh start. We both rebagged our pink, and I think I might rebag my black. I think I'm gonna do my light green rebags. 
You can choose any color that you'd like to rebag. Or you don't have to rebag if you're happy with how it's flowing. He gave you a big bag so you could tie a knot in the top. And if you can't quite tie a knot, ask someone older to help you out with that. Or you could use a rubber band to secure it at the top too. It's good to close it so it doesn't end up overflowing. So we have a fresh start now, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Then you just wanna trim those bags. Give them a small snip, just like in the beginning. All right, Eight. mine are all rebagged, all set. I'm gonna shuffle mine around. So are we gonna give it a little bit of a, a covering kind of, there? Yeah. Perfect. I think for this first one, I'm just gonna use the light green and just kind of go over where those two colors met. Just a little something extra. It covers up that that place where the two colors met, and I think it gives it some nice dimension. I'm gonna use that same lighter shade of green to do the second cookie as well. I'm gonna do the second cookie in white for mine. All right. All right, so for the plaque cookie, I'm gonna write a word on this one, and Elizabeth is gonna draw that cute little ant that we showed you in the example. So you're gonna to wanna to grab your little watermelon that you set aside, and to start, kind of go along with these three sections already in the cookie, and I'm gonna start with the bottom circle. My icing's not coming out too good, so I'm gonna cut it a little bit more. I'm just going to swirl it around. Then I'm going to do its middle section. It's kind of like a snowman. Oh, it is. Then I'm going to put my sprinkle in the middle. Mm -hmm. Then the top. And then once I get those three sections, I'm going to add the little feet. It's kind of like the letter B and the letter D. And then two little dots for the hands, like he's holding the watermelon. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. And then some antennas. I can't handle it. He's so cute. And then if you just want to add some other things, you can add a little outline around your cookie. So I'm just going to re-outline the shape that we did. I think if I thought of ants being this cute all the time, I wouldn't be bothered by them at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome anytime. Oh, Elizabeth, he's so cute. And I'll add a little polka dot. Because it's hard to stop. It is hard just to stop. You just can't. You can add eyes if you want, but I'm just going to leave mine. Oh, he's so cute. I'm going to use mine as a canvas to write something on. I feel so excited that it is summer. I so, was thinking you were going to write that word summer. Too. So one thing to do is when you write, I always suggest practicing just to get a feel for how words work. If you don't want to write out the word summer, because it is quite long, you could write yum, because that's what this set makes all of us probably think. And so I just think writing is something that we're often intimidated to do, but you never get good at anything unless you practice and try. 
and it's a cookie and you can eat it in the end. So I encourage you to think of a word if you want to do this and just go for it. Always start as far over as you can because it stinks to run out of room. So when I stop a letter, I push down a little bit. love to see your cookies when you guys are all done too so be sure to take a picture and tag us or send us an email we love to see your work yay summer so there we go with that let's do our finals oh my gosh we're almost done elizabeth i'm wow. so sad oh, it went so, so fast quick. yeah i like on the whole watermelon a way that you can just make it a little bit more fun is just to add like a little heart somewhere on it. Mm -hmm. You could write a word on this too. You could write your name. There really is, it's just a blank canvas that you could do anything on. I think it's just hard to stop. It is. And then I think the popsicle, let's do another little line in that area to distinguish between the, the rind and the fruit. And I'm gonna do the same on my cupcake. gonna add a few lines oh I like that that's fun in black too it makes it cartoony mm -hmm. and there we have it wow oh my gosh that was so fun I hope you guys had as much fun as we did yeah um storing instructions for these so these are all very wet right now so it's best not to stack them they will smush all your hard work so go ahead and store them in the box that they came in. They can just sit out all night as they dry. They can actually stay in the box for two nights and they'll be perfectly fresh if you haven't eaten them by then. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love if you shared a picture with us. And any other suggestions? Um, just enjoy your cookies. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for coming. We hope you'll join us again and cheers. cheers.